I'm just spending a few moments here kind of watching the storms kind of gather in the sky and listen to the wind in the trees and uh, thinking about Peace Pilgrim and our talking yesterday about her first four preparations and kind of looking through her life and reading some of her material, it really occurs to me how much of spiritual life is really common sense. You know, it's doing the stuff we know we need to do just for our own health and for our own well-being. And uh, today she talks about the four purifications. And usually in, usually in spiritual life, when the different traditions talk about purifications, they're talking about moving things out of the way that prevent us from seeing oneness in everything. Vivekananda even goes on to say that, that the easy definition for ethics, for what's right and wrong, he said, if something moves toward harmony, toward oneness, then it's virtue. If it, if it moves toward multiplicity, or if it requires division, then it is its vice. Anyway, uh, that kind of culminates with that idea of, of getting rid of the, the idea of me and mine. That's what all selfishness, all improper desire, uh, you know, deluding desire, that's, that's kind of the nature of it. It's always a focus on me and mine. And you're always doing better if you focus on others, if you try and get your mind out of your own head, to get your attention out of your own head, and uh, to the well-being of, of your brothers and sisters out there. Anyway, the four purifications from, uh, from our Peace Pilgrim. Purification of the bodily temple. You know the oldest scripture that we have around still, the Rig Veda, one of the prayers in there I've mentioned before. Uh, is that exact thing, that the idea that, that this body that you live in is your temple, it's the temple of the Divine Spirit. And, uh, you know, the devotion that we develop and the love that we develop is really for that divinity, for the perfect love that it represents, the ideals that it represents. And so it's interesting that Peace Pilgrim's first talk about purification is the body, taking care of the body. It's your temple. It's what you're going to uh, experience your old age in. <laughs> So you want to feed it well, feed it properly, feed it responsibly. Uh, you know, you want to take care of it. And that's what she says. Are you free from all bad habits? <laughs> How many of us can answer yes to that? Are we free of even most of our bad habits? But that's, that's the work, you know. In your diet, do you stress the vital foods, the fruits, the whole grains, the vegetables, the nuts? Do you get to bed early and get enough sleep? Do you get plenty of fresh air and sunshine, exercise? contact with nature? If you can answer yes to all of these questions, well, you've gone a long way toward purification of your bodily temple. But, uh, you know, many of us don't, especially in modern life. We're holed up inside, we sit in front of a desk and computer all day long, uh, we eat, you know, the, the highly processed foods with lots of starches and fats and salts in them, and preservatives. Being reasonable is not being fanatic. And uh, being reasonable looks fanatic when everybody's living out way on the edge of what's healthy these days. And so get your body in a state where it, it does what you want, where it feels good, it feels free, it feels movable, it feels, you know, uh, ready to go when you're ready to go. That it's not always holding you back with lethargy and weight and everything's uncomfortable and you can't fit in your clothes properly and you can't sit in the chair properly, all of these things. So take care of your temple. Next is even a little bit more subtle, more difficult, I think. The purification of thought. It is not enough to, rid, to do right things and to say right things. You must also think right things. You know, so none of this uh, sitting behind the wheel on the freeway screaming at people. <laughs> you know, road rage, cussing out people for cutting you off. But to get rid of those things. Positive thoughts can be powerful influences for good especially positive thoughts about yourself. You know, that inner voice should be encouraging for you. You should really ban bad thinking about yourself and about others from your mind in general. If you find yourself doing it, just stop and, and start thinking positively, that's all. There's not a big trick to it. It starts to become a habit after a while. But we get in the habit because it's somehow pleasing to the ego to look down on others, to pick on them, <laughs> to be witty and say rude things about them. And uh, it's not nice in the long run. It doesn't build good relationships. It doesn't build a happy, 
space to live in and it's your mind. It's where you're going to live for the rest of your life in your own mind. So clean it up. Make it a positive, optimistic, happy place to live. And uh, that's how life will be enjoyable for you. Our third purification is the purification of desires. Now this is interesting. You know, in Vedanta, just to have any desire is, is questionable <laughs> and is deemed not helpful. But she's talking about purification of desires. So an interesting approach. Since you are here to get yourself into harmony with the laws that govern human conduct and with the part and your part, the scheme of things, your desires should be focused in this direction. They should be healthy desires. They shouldn't be compulsive. They, they shouldn't be desires that you regret the next day, you know. They should be desires that uh, build and are positive. They, they take you toward what you want to be, what your ideal person is, what your ideal uh, human being is. They should move in that direction. So weed out the ones that are unhelpful, the ones that lead you to distraction, the ones that, that lead you to putting things off, the ones that lead you to laziness and inertia, you know, and the ones that also just lead you to meaningless activity. Uh, those, those purifications will help you out a lot in the, in the long run. It feels great when you start accomplishing your goals, even the small ones, that you can just tick them off. And once you, you get some momentum going, you know, you can really change your life. And a changed life is a changed world. All right, and our last one is your purification of motives. Obviously, your motive should never be greed or self-seeking or of wish for self-glorification. Yeah, lust, greed, name, and fame. Anything motivated by those things is ultimately going to get you in trouble. You know, there might be a few seconds of pleasure here and there along the way, but the sum total is, is misery. <laughs> the sum total is an unhappy soap opera. <laughs> you shouldn't even have the selfish mo motive of attaining inner peace for yourself. To be of service to your fellow humans must be your motive before your life can come into harmony. You know, it ha it's helpful. One of the tricks that Swami Vivekananda talks about in that regard is to see your ideal in everybody, to see the beloved in everyone, to see God in everyone, if you want that language, or if you're not afraid of that language, to see God in everyone. And then everything that you do becomes not a service toward, but an offering to. Your life becomes worship. You know, and worship is just a natural response to, to seeing love. So you see love everywhere and you begin to act accordingly and that is worship. So worshiping everyone and everything, having that, that wonderful attitude of sacredness to all things. So those are the four purifications from our friend the Peace Pilgrim. Uh, follow your bliss. Listen to your heart and your soul, and your life too will be inspiring.